In this video, I'm going to talk about dimensioning. So there's two parts to dimensioning. Dimensioning mechanics, which is essentially which lines do you use, what do the lines look like, arrowheads, gaps, things like that, what it looks like on the drawing. The other part to dimensioning is much more complicated. It's which dimensions do you use, where do you put them, what dimensions get uh, dimensions, and you know how is it arranged. Now it does matter, but it really matters in an assembly context. So all I've got here is just a single detail part on a drawing. It, it's not really critical how you dimension a single part. It's critical how you dimension a part that goes into an assembly. And hopefully I can make more videos about that coming soon. We're going to focus on the mechanics part, how we apply the dimensions, what they're supposed to look like. So let's get started. We've got three uh, kinds of dimension dimensioning lines, the dimension line, the extension line, and the leader line. We're going to use all three in just a moment. So let's start, let's imagine we only have a dimension line. So a dimension line is thin. We're going to have an arrowhead at either end going to the part surface. Typically the arrowhead is filled in and the middle of the dimension line is broken for the dimension, okay? So simple enough, it's customary to use decimal inches or if you're using metric, decimal millimeters, however you're in the metric system works, basically not fractions on uh, current drawings. Now, this is known as a unidirectional dimension. It reads from the bottom of the drawing. If I wrote the dimension like this, where it follows a dimension line, that's known as an aligned dimension. It's more common than not in, you know, drawings in the United States made to the ASME standard to use unidirectional dimensions because you don't have to turn the drawing to read the dimension correctly, okay? So I'll be using unidirectional dimensions exclusively here, right? So put my dimension back in there, fill in my dimension line. So the next thing you'll notice, if I go ahead and do more dimension lines for all these features, the inside of the part is gonna get very, very crowded very, very quickly. So we need another kind of line, which you probably guessed it, is the extension line. So what the extension line does, it's gonna come off of the part, so we're still trying to dimension the same feature. We're gonna draw a thin line, and there's gonna be a visible gap here from the part about a sixteenth of an inch, but it really doesn't matter. Nobody's ever gonna put a ruler up to it and see what the distance is. The important phrase is visible gap. Now it's important on any drawing that the gaps are all the same. So if your CAD program picks a sixteenth, a thirty-second, an eighth inch, it doesn't matter as long as they're all the same. If you have different gaps, then your drawing is gonna look messy. So I'll do the same thing up here. Come off of the part, I'll leave a little gap. Right, and draw a nice thin line, and that was probably a little bit too thin. There we go. So now, I'm just gonna move this dimension line over here. Right. I'll draw my arrows. The dimension line, and put some dimensions for you here. The extension line should extend about an eighth inch beyond the dimension line. Okay, so I'm going to fill in these arrows. And now we could get rid of this. All right, so that moves dimension lines out of the part. Now the next thing with this is that we have to pay attention to where we put the dimension lines. It's not It's not the end of the world for an extension line to cross an extension line, but if we can avoid it, we want to. So here's what it would look like if I put this smaller dimension outside of the larger dimension. All right now we've got extension lines crossing dimension lines. Not ideal, right? We can avoid that by putting this dimension inside of the larger dimension. 
So what I did here with these dimension lines, if you notice, they look a little bit different. If you have a small gap here, you can do a couple different things with your dimension lines to fit the dimension in there correctly. So this is one technique where you put the dimension between the extension lines and then the dimension lines are outside. Another technique is to bend the dimension line and put it totally outside. So if you have a really small gap, that's what you'll typically do. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, but it's all just for when you have a very small gap between extension lines. Now, the last type of line we'll talk about is the leader line. So we, we need a leader for this hole. If we put the dimension inside of here, we'd run out of room very, very quickly. So the way a leader works, if you notice this index card, I'm going to line it up with the center of the circle, but I'm not going to draw a line all the way through it. I'll come out here, right? I'm going to have a short horizontal shoulder here. This would be about a quarter of an inch diameter symbol and then dimension. Okay, so it's important that the leader points to the center of the circle, or it looks, it looks funny if it comes at it from a, a, a fun, weird angle. Now, the rule with leader lines is they can never be vertical and they can never be horizontal. <clears throat> There's kind of a danger zone of a couple degrees between horizontal and vertical that they shouldn't go because then they'll start to look like other kinds of lines. So occasionally there's some fancy footwork. You know, I could just as easily put this leader line down here or over here. I can cross it back if you run out of room. So I'll show you what I mean there. So the leader can go the other way. That's no problem. I gotta remember my arrowhead. And leaders only have a single arrowhead. And that's the basics of dimensioning. Those are the three kinds of lines. You want to look out that you don't have uh, dimension lines cross dimension lines. Maybe I didn't mention that. You don't want dimension lines to cross dimension lines or leader lines to cross dimension lines if you can help it. So let me give you an example of what I mean. This is a bad situation where you have a dimension line crossing a leader line. Of course, it can be easily fixed by just moving the dimension line above the leader line, and that's what you're going to see on most well-made drawings, right? The larger dimensions should be on the outside of the smaller dimensions, and that's the reason that's done, so you have less lines crossing lines. Okay. So that's the basics of dimensioning mechanics. There's a little more to it than that, but that's basically all you need to know to get to dimensioning a drawing. Leader line, dimension line, extension line, leave visible gaps, put larger dimensions outside of smaller dimensions, and make sure your leader lines are never vertical or horizontal. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.